place. Except for what? I feel like you said I'll be safe tomorrow. Because it's harder. But I feel like why would you want to miss the hard day? It's harder to make up. Then. It doesn't make any sense when my students are notoriously gone on quiz or test days. I don't know. I don't know if they want And then it's like they end up taking it two, three, four, sometimes weeks later. And it's way worse. So they just took it. Even the study, you just take the like random yeah, if you do that, but most of the kids that miss are the kids that don't study, or like intentionally miss. <laughs> so, anyways, what we're going to do today is we're going to, there are two methods to balance redox reactions. The first method that I'm going to show you today is an easier method, but it only can balance certain kinds of redox reactions, so it's not the best method. Um, but it is one of the methods, so we are going to start with the easier method first, and then we'll do the more difficult one, but we'll probably focus mostly on the more difficult one, just because it allows us to balance pretty much any kind of redox reaction, as we're, what we're going to do today just balances some of them, and cannot balance all of them, and it can become a little bit difficult to, uh, um, to balance electrons and atoms at the same time. Okay, and I think I have a bunch of examples here. This one's the white one. Okay, so that's the last one I'm going to do. I'll start with any, we'll start with these guys. I don't know if you have much space for extra stuff, probably not. We have two steps for examples. Okay. I don't know why I just don't put it in your notes. Okay. In order for us to be able to balance uh, this equation, uh, we need to uh, figure out what the oxidation numbers are so that we can make sure that we balance the electrons. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I assign your oxidation numbers, identify just for practice, the reducing agent, the oxidizing agent, that stuff like we did yesterday. Okay? And then I'll talk about how we go about balancing this. Because if you look at this, from an atom standpoint, it's what? It's all balanced, right? I got a silver on one side, a silver on the other, copper on one side, and copper on the other. From an atom standpoint, it is balanced. But you, what you will see is from an electron standpoint, it is not. So, first thing, let's identify oxidation numbers. What is it for this guy? Uh, don't think too hard. It's really easy. What? Zero? Yeah. Okay, it's not an ion. And it's a free atom. How about this one? One plus. It is a free atom, but it's or not a free atom. It is an ion, so we can't call it a free atom. This one is not an ion, so it's therefore a free atom. It's zero. And here it's two plus. Okay, just quickly identify which guy gets reduced. Electrons. G E R. Gain electron reduction. And this is the one that gets oxidized. And now uh, the one that gets reduced is the one that is which agent? Cut. So this goes from one plus to zero. This goes from zero to two plus. Do you see my problem here? electrons here. Okay? So if that's the case, I need these two differences in oxidation numbers to match up. And it's really not too difficult in this problem. What do you think we need to do? Multiply 
minus something. Yep. So like this, and like that. And now what we've got is this transfer of, of really this is technically a one minus electron transfer, right? Take this times two. Now it'll be two minus, and now we'll balance out the loss of two electrons here. All right, so it looks kind of goofy. Some rules we've done before. Remember we've really done redox reactions in the past at all? Because normally we think, well, why can't we just reduce that to one and one? Well, from an atom standpoint, absolutely. But we also now, for these guys, because they transfer their electrons, we have to also balance their electrons out. Got it? Let's do a little more difficult. Yep, I want to, well, yeah. I mean, if you look here, okay, I went from a zero oxidation number to a two plus ion. But right? if we know it, it became two plus, it had to have lost two electrons, right? And if I look here, okay, this went from a positive to neutral, it only gained one of those two electrons. So if it only gained one of those two electrons, I'm gonna need a second one to gain the other one. Does that make sense, Amy? Make sure. Let's do a little bit more difficult one. Let's do this guy. I'm just going to put their oxidation number or oxidation states underneath. Um, there's no real reason to specifically put them on top always. So, oxidation number for this is this one. Gotta get an overall charge of one minus, so this has to be my plus. Okay, which one's more electronegative? Okay, so we're gonna assign that as its typical guy, which would be one minus, therefore this is. Okay, oxygen is the more electronegative, it's always two minus, which that makes nitrogen the positive guy, and a what? And then two minus one plus. Let's identify which what gets reduced and what gets oxidized. Okay. What gets uh, <coughs> reduced in this standpoint or in this problem? Yes. What you said, I, I reduced by like. Yeah, reduced means gains electrons. Oh, right. Which one gains the electrons? Uh, yep. This gets reduced, and we could say five plus to four plus, which really is one electron gain, right? Fine. Okay. Which one was the one that got oxidized? SN. SN.
Oh, that's why I said four. Because I've never read that charge. Oh. Sorry. Do you see why it's four now? Yeah. This has a two minus charge, so these got to add up to give you the, the, that charge. I just forgot to write that charge. The whole thing is two minus. Chlorine is still one minus. So I, I like the polyatomic guy. So what I need is I need to balance these electrons. Okay? So what am I going to have to do? Okay. Multiply by four, what that's going to look like then is I'll have a four here and a four here. That will balance my electrons out for this particular problem. Okay? This would end up being 20 plus. This would end up being 16 plus. Therefore, gain how many electrons? Instead of just one. 20 plus to 16 plus would be what? Four. Four. Okay? Now, after we balance the electrons, we need to now go back and see if the atoms what we need to do to balance the other atoms because these other guys aren't going to be balanced in this particular situation. So, six chlorines, one chlorine. Do you see how this doesn't change the electrons at all because I'm taking a negative one and a negative one, so I'm having six negative ones turning out to be six negative ones. That doesn't affect, that doesn't change any, any electrons, the electrons don't change, so it doesn't matter if I mess with those. Okay? Let's try to balance these oxygens now. It looks like I have uh, 12 and 8. So that probably needs to be a what? already balanced. So just a quick little check. We got eight hydrogens. We got six chlorines on both sides. We got one ten on both sides. We got four oxygens on both sides. And we have 12 oxygens. Four hydrogens on both sides, sorry, and, and 12 oxygens on both sides. And all the electrons are now balanced. So that is your final answer. Okay. So what you gotta do first, balance your electrons. Make sure those guys are balanced. Then if you have to go back and balance the other guys that weren't involved in or didn't lose or gain any electrons. Last problem. balancing specifically the electrons? Yeah. yeah, so the guy that got, I don't remember which one, was produced. The, the nitrogen. The nitrogen got reduced, and it only gained one electron, but in the equation, the tin lost four. So if nitrogen only gained one, and tin lost four, where do those other three electrons go? And so we had to balance the electrons first to make sure that we didn't just randomly lose because an electron is matter, right? And we can't create or destroy matter. And so if we lost those three electrons, we need to balance them. So it's really the only difference between regular balancing and redox is we also have to balance the electrons and then balance everything else. In things that aren't redox reactions, their oxidation numbers aren't changing, so we don't have to ever worry about balancing the electrons. If we balance the atoms, we balance everything. But in a redox reaction, electrons get passed. So we have to take that into consideration. So in this one, same type of problem, except for I didn't give you the equation. It's probably a good little refresher to review here for us to be able to write these, this equation. We got solid lead oxide. 
what is that going to PBL. What was that? PBL? Because the two tells me let's do plus and that's two minus and you would reduce. And ammonia gas, oof, do we know what that is? Ammonium ion is NH4. Knowing that this is always one plus. Yeah, if I have three of these, I have to multiply one plus by three. Because does this have an overall charge? So this is this is neutral compound, which means it has no charge. Which means these should add up to give me zero. I mean, like the oxidation number and the last one, and then you like add them together. Are you talking about this one? This one and this one is this one's neutral, has no charge. Yeah. So these should add up to be zero. This one's not neutral. So they should. No, Always two minus. So I, I, since I knew that, I knew that that would be two minus. Two minus times three is six minus. So six minus plus what gives you one minus? Six minus plus six. Multiply both of these by three. 
that still keeps my leads balanced. But in this one, this has an oxidation number of zero. So simply taking just this one and multiplying by two makes two times three minus, that gives me six minus, six minus to zero. I don't have to multiply this by anything. And it keeps it what? Balanced. So I, didn't, I don't need to multiply both of them by two in this context. I do here because three times two is six, six to zero, but I still have to make sure the atoms are balanced. And since three times zero doesn't change its oxidation state, I can go ahead and multiply that by three and not affect electrons. So it's a little bit goopier in this particular problem because I'm going from six minus to zero, and I don't need to multiply this by anything because it's already balanced when I put a two here. Here I go from six plus to zero, but to keep the atoms balanced, I do put a three in both. To get it fully balanced? Yeah, I do. Yep, and now it's fully balanced, yes? So like here, I got I go from six plus to zero, so a total of six electrons gained. And I go from six minus to zero, so a total of six electrons lost. Make sense? While still keeping these balanced, I didn't add a two here. I could have added a two here, and it wouldn't have changed the six to zero, but it wouldn't have left it balanced. Does that make sense? We're done.